Hello and welcome to this video on finding unknown lengths in a non-right angled triangle. Now if it was a right angled triangle, let's just say I had uh, this right angled triangle here and I had these lengths B, C and A. Well let's suppose I wanted to find this length given these two lengths here. We would know we had used Pythagoras theorem, so we'd have B squared plus C squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, as we have here. So that's Pythagoras. But Pythagoras only works, we know, when we have a right angle triangle. And similarly, we could use trigonometry to find kind of um, angles. So if we make this angle capital C, that's lowercase c there, then we could say, for example, that sine of C, and do you remember Sokotoa? It's so because we're using sine, and sine of the angle C is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, this side is the opposite here, and that's the hypotenuse, so we could say sine of C is C over A. But these are only true if we have a right angle triangle. If we don't have a right angle triangle, then we can use something called the sine rule, because this formula involves sine, or we could use something called the cosine rule, and notice this involves cos. Remember, S-I-N is just short for sine, and C-O-S, cos, is short for cosine. And notice also how we've labelled the sides and the angles. Side lengths, we always use lowercase letters, so A, B and C in some order. And then the angles we label as capital letters. And they come in pairs, so the angle opposite the A is capital A. The angle opposite the side length B is capital B. The angle opposite the side length C is capital C. So that's how we label it. So let's dive into some problems to see how these work. I've got this triangle here first. Now basically, if you have two side angle pairs, so when I say a side angle pair, I mean a side length and its opposite angle, side angle pair, side angle pair. If that happens, we use the sine rule. So if we label the lengths, we could make that little a, and we could make that little b, then this angle here is opposite that, so that's gonna be capital A, and this angle is opposite the length, so it's gonna be capital B. We don't need to use a c in this case. And then we can just use a sine rule. So we're going to do A over sine of the angle. So A is X over sine of the angle. So sine of 55 is equal to B, which is 3, because look, B over sine B, over sine of capital B, so sine of 40 degrees. And now we've got an equation involving X. And just think of this as kind of solving the equation or changing the subject of the equation. We want to make X a subject. Now it's currently been divided by sine of 55. So how do we get rid of that over sine of 55? Well, we multiply both sides by sine of 55. So if we multiply this side by sine of 55, it gets rid of it, leaving just X. And then this side, we're gonna multiply by sine of 55. So that multiply by sine of 55 degrees. And by the way, whenever we have a fraction times a non-fraction, we could just put that in the numerator of the fraction. So we could write this as 3 sine 55 over sine 40. Now I just need to put that in my calculator, and that gives me 3.82 to 3 significant figures. Let's check that looks sensible. Well, this side length looks a bit longer than that 3, so that probably looks right. So remember, when we have two angle side pairs like this, side angle, side angle, then we use the sine rule. So as a test your understanding question, why don't you have a go at using the sine rule to work out the value of y in this triangle here? So you may want to pause the video here and have a go. Right, let's do it. I'm going to try and do this without labelling the sides this time. We've got a side divided by the sine of the opposite angle. So we could do a side y divided by the sine of the opposite angle. And then that's equal to another side, 7 over the sine of the opposite angle. So note that the sides go at the top, the sine of the angles goes at the bottom. Now we need to multiply both sides by sine of 31, so we get y is equal to this times sine of 31. We could just put it at the top, so it's 7 sine 31 degrees over sine of 80 degrees. You might have written 7 over sine of 80 and then separately times sine of 31, but it's the same thing. And then we just stick it in a calculator. So we get 7 sine 31 over sine of 80. And that gives us 3.66 to three significant figures. Well done if you got that right. 
Now, we've got this question three here, but I just copy it out. This time, we can't use the sine rule because we've got a side and an opposite angle involved, but we don't have another angle we can use. So we don't have another side angle pair, but we do have all three sides involved and we have an angle. And look at the cosine rule here. We have all three sides, A, B, and C, and we've got one angle involved, that capital letter A there. And we can use the cosine rule whenever that unknown side is opposite the known angle. If it's not, we'll see in another video how we can deal with that situation. And by the way, notice with Pythagoras' theorem, can you see that's very similar to the cosine rule? You've got b squared plus c squared is a squared, b squared plus c squared is a squared. So cosine rule is almost like an extension of Pythagoras' theorem that works on non right angle triangles as well. And if it was a right angle triangle, basically this gets wiped out just to get Pythagoras' theorem. So let's try and use it here. We're going to label the stuff here. So notice the only angle in cosine rule is capital A. So we're going to label the only angle capital A, which means the opposite side has to be little a. And then it doesn't matter which way we put uh, the B and the C around. We're going to label that B and that C, but it could be the other way around. Because if you swap the two values, it doesn't make any difference to the formula. So we're going to put it into the cosine rule. We've got A squared, i.e. X squared, is equal to B squared plus C squared, so 4 squared plus 3 squared, minus 2 times B times C times cos A. So 2 times 4 times 3 times the cosine cos of 80. So we could put the whole right side into our calculator, and that gives me 20.8324. Don't round it yet because we need to do some more working. Now we've got x squared. So to undo this squared, we just square root both sides. We do the square root of answer key to use our previous answer. And we get 4.56 to three significant figures. Does that look sensible? Well, yes, this is a bit longer than that. And it kind of looks just a tiny bit longer than that four. So that's probably right. And as a test of your understanding, why don't you have a go at this question? So we've got this triangle here with these two sides of 7 and 5. We've got an angle of 110 between them, and we want to find the perimeter of this shape, so the total edge length. You may want to pause the video and have a go at that. Right, let's do it. We want to find the perimeter. So let's label the sides first. If I just copy out the cosine rule again, this is the only angle in the formula, the capital A, so that side length is A. Let's just call that side length X. And we've got B and C. It doesn't matter what order we put the B and the C in. So let's put stuff into our formula. We've got A squared, which is X squared, is equal to B squared, so 7 squared, plus C squared, 5 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 5 times cos of the angle, which is 110. So just put that in your calculator, the whole right-hand side and we get 97.94, and then we just square root both sides to get 9.8965. Now we want the perimeter, so the perimeter is just the sum of all the three lengths, so it's just this plus the seven plus the five, so we just need to add 12 to our previous answer, and we get 21.897. That's two three decimal places. Well done if you got that right. We've got question six here. We want to determine x in this triangle. And notice this time we have algebraic sides. So we've got 2x plus 4. We've got 2x plus 1. We've got this 60 here and x plus 3. So we do the usual thing. We label that as capital A. That's going to be little a, that's going to be little b, and that's going to be little c. We're going to be using the cosine rule because we know the three sides and we know this angle. So we've labelled them according to the cosine rule here. So then we just plug everything into this equation. It doesn't matter we have algebraic sides, it still works. So a squared, 2x plus 1 squared, is equal to b squared plus c squared. So we've got x plus 3 squared plus 2x plus 4 squared minus... 2bc cos a, so minus 2bc cos a, so cos of 60. Now let's just try and simplify the stuff we've got. If we were to write out this bracket twice, because we're squaring it, and expand it out, do you remember the quick way to expand out like two things squared is you do the first thing squared, which is 4x squared, plus 2 times that times that, which is 4x, 2 times 2x times 1, and then the second thing squared, we get plus 1, 
I'm going to do the same here. The first thing is squared is x squared plus 2 times that times that is 6x plus the second thing is squared is plus 9. That squared is 4x squared plus 2 times that times that is plus 16x plus that squared is plus 16. Now note, by the way, that cos of 60, if we were to do that on a calculator, that is half. So that cancels with this 2 here, because 2 times half is just 1. So we can ignore these and just do minus this. So it's going to be minus. And do you remember, whenever you expand something out that you're subtracting, put it in a bracket first. So we expand this out. So we've got x times 2x is 2x squared. We've got plus 4x, and we've got plus 6x. That's plus 10x. And we've got plus 12 as well. So let's just simplify further. We've got 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals... Now, how many x squareds have we got? We've got 1x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared, but we're minusing 2x squared, which is 3x squared. We've also got x plus 16x, which is 22x, but we're subtracting 10x, so that's going to give us plus 12x. And then we've got 9 plus 16, which is 25, but we're minusing 12, so that's plus 13. And this is a quadratic equation. We want 0 on one side, so we're going to collect everything on the side with more x squared, which is the left side. So we're going to subtract 3x squared, so we just have 1x squared left. We're going to subtract the 12x, so we have 4x minus 12x, which is minus 8x. And we're going to subtract the 13, so we've got the 1 minus the 13 is minus 12 equals 0. And then we need two numbers which add to give minus 8 times to give 12. Now you soon find out that this doesn't actually factorise. So we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. And when you do, and I'm going to cheat by using the quadratic solve on my calculator, we get x is equal to 4 plus 2 root 7, or x is equal to 4 minus 2 root 7. Now this value here, if you press the SD key, is negative. This is roughly minus 1.29. And if you were to say find this side, so you did minus 1.29, and you times it by 2, and you added 1, then it's a negative length, so that's not allowed. So this must be the answer.